and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this quilt from start to finish, including this lovely little frill around the edge. I just thought it would be a little bit different to add the frill around the edge. Um, anyway, so that's what we're going to do today. So let's get started. For this project, I used one yard of the green floral fabric and one yard of the pink floral fabric, two and a half yards of the cream cotton fabric and four and a half yards of the floral backing fabric. Cut 42 5 inch by 5 inch squares of the pink fabric and 42 5 inch by 5 inch squares of the green fabric. Then cut 84 5 inch by 5 inch squares of the plain cream fabric. To make your four patch, place one pink, one green and two cream squares in this order. Take your right hand top square and place it on top of the left hand square with right sides together then take the right side bottom square and place it on the left side bottom square and then we're going to sew down the right side of each of them you can then either clip or pin in place before sewing sew down each side of your squares taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance no need to back tack at the start and finish on this and if like me you have a special quarter of an inch um, foot for your machine then good idea to use it for this if you've chain stitched, then snip your two pieces apart and cut off any loose threads. Then set your seams by lightly pressing with the seams closed. Then press the seam towards the patterned piece of fabric and press. And then repeat for your other two squares, again pressing towards the patterned fabric. Next, pin the two joined pieces together, making sure that you have a plain piece of fabric opposite pattern piece of fabric and make sure that your two seams nest together nicely so that you don't have a gap between the joins. Then take over to your sewing machine and sew taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and be very careful as you go over the joins making sure that they stay in place. I like to remove the pin at the last minute. Then set your seam by lightly pressing. Then open it out where it is leaving the seam in position. Then finger press the seam before pressing with hot iron. You will need to make 42 of these before we can start making the quilt. Take your first four patch and place it on a rotating cutting mat. If you don't have a rotating cutting mat, you can place it at the side of your table so that you can access it from two sides, which make it a little bit easier. Make your first cut one and a half inches to the right of the centre. Make a nice clean cut, then rotate your cutting mat a quarter turn. If you don't have a cutting mat, you can just move around to the side of the table so that you can access a little bit better to cut your next cut, which again will be one and a half inches from the centre. Continue turning and cutting until you have made four cuts one and a half inches from the centre. When you finish cutting, you need to rearrange your pieces by turning around each of the middle sides and the centre piece. So it looks something like this. And when you've done this, I like to put them all onto a tray so I keep all the same pieces together until I've got about maybe 10 or 12 um, disappearing four patch squares ready to assemble. Then re repeat the same process with all of the other four patches that you're going to turn into disappearing four patches and arrange them all on the tray in the order that you would like them to be and then when you've got enough ready you'll be ready to assemble them all. This is the order to sew your pieces. Take the top row middle piece and place it on the top row left and then the middle piece and place it on the middle left, bottom middle piece on the bottom left. Then if you want to, you can pin or clip them together, making sure that you match up your seams and nest any seams together. It's best to chain piece together. So take the first two pieces and sew, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance. When you're almost at the end, you need to get your next two pieces, match up the seams and pin or clip if you want to, entirely up to you, and then carry on sewing. You can just slide them under, no need to lift the presser foot, just put at the end of the foot and it should accept them and carry on sewing. So keep sewing in this fashion, taking the top two pieces, then the middle two pieces, 
and then the bottom two pieces and keep going until you've sewn together all of the first two columns and we'll sew the third column on separately but let's get all those first two columns sewn together when of your when all of your first and second columns are sewn together you'll need to add the third column I'm just showing you here how it works but we are going to chain piece them again to make life easier starting with your top left and mid top middle we're going to at attach the top right hand piece to it um, so line them up ready for sewing and then sew taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance then find your middle right piece and match this up nesting the seams together and again so taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance then find your bottom right hand piece add this and again so taking your quarter of an inch seam allowance then carry on sewing all of the right hand pieces until your chain is complete and here are all of the rows sewn together now they just need to be separated so i kind of keep the three rows together and work on three at a time and then we're going to um, set the seams and press the seams the top row we're going to have the seams all going to the left the middle row the seams will all go to the right and then the bottom row they'll go to the left again so that they can all um, nest nicely together set and press all of your rows and then when they're all nicely set and pressed you can join them together take the top row and place it over the middle row with right sides together and the bottom row also over the middle row and again place it with right sides together you can either pin or clip your pieces together i'm using clips make sure that you line up your seams and nest your seams together that's why we ironed one row to one side and the other row to the other side so they'll fit nice and flush together match up those seams and make sure the seams nest together nicely with one going to the right one going to the left and both the centers in line next sew all your rows together taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and removing your clips as you go along but don't remove your clip till the last minute because you want to keep make sure you keep your seams in line i like to sew all of my top row together by chain piecing so there's my first two rows sewn together now i take my next uh, disappearing four patch and gently feed that into the machine and then carry on sewing so i'll do all of my um, middle to top rows first and when i've done all my middle to top rows then i turn around and do all my middle to bottom rows continue until all rows are joined next press the rows so start by setting the seams so set the seam by just gently pressing then open out leaving the seam in the upward position finger press a little bit and then press with a nice hot iron and then for the bottom seam we need that to be um, going upwards as well so push it upwards and then press ideally you want to have the seams going upwards on one piece and then the piece that's going to sit next to it you want to put the seams going downwards so if you remember to do one set of seams up and the next set of seams down continue to press and set your seams in this way until all 42 pieces have been pressed this is how they should look you now now have 42 disappearing four patches cut 42 squares of batting seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches and 42 squares of backing fabric eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches next we're going to layer our quilt pieces so start by laying your backing piece down with the right side facing down then place your batting on top and then on top of your batting you're going to place your disappearing four patch with right side facing upwards then pin in place I put about nine pins in then we're going to sew down each side of each column and down each side of each row at your sewing machine sew a quarter of an inch to the side of the first column then turn around and go back down and sew a quarter of an inch away from the center line of the next column and then do the same to the sides then sew on the other side of the seam to all the tram lines we have just made so we're now going to be sewing on the outside and we're going to sew down each seam turn around come back down the other side again a 
quarter of an inch away from that center seam. I'm going to keep going until we've got two tram lines on each of our squares. And this is how it should look. Now all 42 of your disappearing four patches should have their backing and batting in the center and be all joined together nicely with a little bit of quilting. Now is the time to cut them down to size. So they're all going to be cut down to exactly eight inches square. So find the center line and match that up with the four on your quilting ruler. Turn it around, find the center again, find your four, your four inches, match them up and then trim any excess off the side. If you have a rotating cutting mat, turn it a quarter of a turn and then do exactly the same. Find your four inches on your ruler, match it up with the centre and then cut off the excess on the side. If you don't have a rotating um, cutting mat, then you can just turn your um, four patch or disappearing four patch as you go along. So trim all four sides and if you go from the centre to the outside, measuring four inches, you should end up with a square that is eight inches by eight inches. And you will need to do exactly the same for all 42 of your squares. For the sashing, you will need to cut 35 eight inch by two and a half inch pieces and six 52 inch by two and a half inch pieces. You will more than likely need to join your 52 inch pieces of sashing. My fabric was only 44 inches wide. Actually, after taking off the selvages, it was less than that. It was probably more like 40 inches wide. So this is how you join your pieces of fabric for the sashing. Take the strip from the right hand side and face, place it face down at right angles to the piece on the left hand side. Then draw a line from the top left hand side of the top piece down to the bottom right hand side of the bottom piece from corner to corner at a 45 degree angle and then pin both your pieces of fabric together ready for sewing. Then at your sewing machine join together by sewing directly on the line that you drew, back tacking at the start and the finish. Then trim and press your seam open. This is the order to arrange your squares in. Now comes the fun part to join all of your squares together. So take your first two squares and match them up. Decide how you want to um, have your pattern going and match them up very carefully. As you can see here, I'm matching all the seams so that they join together nicely. So I'm putting a pin in um, on each of the seams so that I know I've got my seams matched up. And then I'm going to put a joining strip also. But I wanted to get all the seams matched up first with pins. Then I take one of my two and a half inch wide sashing strips, fold it in half lengthways and place it over the pins. And I put a clip at each end. As I'm having six squares to each row, I need to join six together at this stage. So doing exactly the same process, matching up all the seams, pinning in place, then putting on the sash with clips. I do the same for all six of my squares for each row. And I'm doing seven rows. So I'm going to do this for seven rows of six squares. Then at your sewing machine, sew together. So you're going to be sewing the sashing and the seam at the same time. You will have a gap all the way around your squares without any batting. That's fine, that's for your seam allowance. Continue to sew all of your six pieces together for each row. So you want six pieces for the top row and carry on until you've got seven rows all sewn together like this. Then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch to the side of our seam on our sashing. So there's our seam. We're going to leave it all open and then sew a quarter of an inch to the side of the seam. This row of stitching will form part of our quilting. You'll perhaps, perhaps see it better when it's finished and I show you how it looks open. So you need to do this on all of your seams with the sashing. When all of your rows have been connected together and you've got seven rows of six, Trim off any loose ends and any excess sashing. Turn over to the backing side and then we're going to fold over the sashing so it covers up those nasty seams. You can either press them open or press them to one side. And if you need to, trim them off a little bit. 
so just check that when you fold over your sashing it's going to cover all of the raw edges. You can see here our first row of top stitching and we can either hand stitch the sash down or if we prefer we can machine stitch it and then it will make another row of top stitching on the other side so you'll end up with two rows like a tram line. But it's entirely up to you. Or another option is to hand stitch first and then go over with your machine to get that top stitching on the front. So fold over your sashing and pin it all in place. It does go over quite nicely and fits quite well. If you choose to hand stitch, go ahead and hand stitch with a whip stitch. If you prefer, you can sew this on your sewing machine. It is a little bit, bit more tricky and you need to make sure that you've pinned your sashing nice and straight so that when you sew close to the edge you're going to get a nice straight row of stitching a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Um, so if you're not confident enough to do this then you might be advised to either tack it first or hand stitch, entirely up to you. Or if you think you'll find it easy you could pin on the other side, so on the right side of your fabric so that you're stitching on the right side of the fabric and then you can see exactly where you're going and it might work out a little bit better but this did actually work out fine for me I sewed about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the um, sashing and as you can see here it's not too bad go ahead and sew down all of your sashing on all of your rows until they're all done when you've finished all the sashing on all of your rows it's time to show them sorry it's time to join them all together so start with your first two pieces and match up all of the seams you also need to make sure that all of your quilting lines up so the tram lines you did for the quilting they all need to match up as well so it's a little bit tricky take your time with this and make sure you match them all up nicely like that and then you can either clip or pin in place I'm clipping here because when I did all of the when I joined all of the rows together I sewed the pieces of fabric first and then I attached the sashing as a separate um, piece because I just thought that would be easier so I get all of this pinned or clipped in my case together nicely before sewing with my quarter of an inch seam allowance then at your sewing machine, so taking your quarter of an inch seam allowance, removing your clips as you go along. Then add your sashing, following the same seam line, a quarter of an inch from the edge. Remember to fold your sashing over so it's double, so it's two and a half inches wide, but you fold it in half, making it one and a quarter inches. Then we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the rows. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from our original seam to make that tram line for our quilting on the other side using a large stitch of about three on my machine. It's number three. I normally sew at two to two and a half and this is done at three. I forgot to mention this before. When you've added the sashing and your extra tram line to all of your rows, trim off any excess so that you can turn your sashing over nicely without any of the seam showing through. My scissors are not very good here but I didn't want to use my best scissors to cut through the batting because it can blunt them but it might have been a better option. Then you can either press your seam open or press it all in one direction and I'm choosing to press this one open I believe um, but most of them I actually press the seam to go down. Then you can fold over your sashing and pin in place. Fold over the sashing to hide the seams and pin in place near the edge of the sashing about a quarter of an inch away from the edge as this is where we're going to stitch. As before you can either hand stitch or you can sew on your sewing machine, it's entirely up to you. Continue to join all of your pieces together, matching up all of your seams as you go making sure that you match every seam and all of your quilting so all the lines match up and you can either add your sa your sashing as I did before separately after you've already joined the two pieces together or like I'm doing here you can add it along with the seam by pinning your rows together first and then at your sewing machine fold your sashing in half down the centre 
and attach your sashing as you go along. I just find it easier to do this way than to pinning it all together. I found this out as I went along with this process, but it's a lot easier to pin first and then add your sashing at the machine as you go along. Remembering, of course, to fold it in half and taking your quarter of an inch seam allowance. When all your rows are joined together, it should look something a bit like this. Next, add your frill. To do this, you will need to cut two and a half wide strips of fabric. To find how much fabric you will need, take twice your width and twice your length and add it together. This was 196 inches for my quilt. Then divide your answer by two, which in my case was 98 inches. Add this measurement to the length of your quilt, which gives you one and a half times the length of your quilt. Then divide this measurement by the width of your fabric, which in my case was 40 inches, and you'll find out how many strips to cut. I needed just over seven strips, so I cut eight. To find out the length of the fabric you need, you multiply the number of strips by the width of your strip. So in my case, it's eight times two and a half inches, which is 20 inches. I cut eight strips of fabric, all two and a half inches wide. If you wanted a fuller frill, you could cut two times the length of your quilt instead of one and a half. If you want a fuller frill, take the measurement of your quilt all the way around it and double that measurement and that's how long you want your strips to be. To join your pieces together, you'll need to take your first piece and place it right side up on your cutting mat and place the piece that you're going to join right side down at right angles on your cutting mat and pin in place and draw a sewing line from the top left hand corner of the top piece down to bottom right hand corner of the bottom piece. Then sew together along the line that you've just drawn. I back tack at the start and the finish of this. Repeat this process to join all of your pieces together. Then you can press your seams open with a nice hot iron. Next join the length together so it's in one continuous piece. To do this, line up both of your ends at right angles and with the bottom piece right side facing up and the top piece right side facing down. Make sure there are no twists or kinks in your fabric. Then line up your ruler to draw a line at 45 degrees. Then put a pin either side of the line that you've just drawn. Then sew directly on the line that you have just drawn, back tacking at the start and the finish. Cut off the ends and then you can press your seam. I'm just finger pressing it here and there it is. Just need to cut that little bit off the top there and there we are. Our whole um, frill is now joined together. Next, fold your fabric in half down the centre. So you're folding it lengthways and then press with a hot iron and continue all the way around the whole length of your fabric. Next, you will need to put four marks on your frill at equal distances apart. So first, you need to fold your, um, your frill fabric in half to find the two midpoints. Mark the two points with a fabric pen. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm marking the two midpoints with a fabric pen at either side of the fabric. And I should just point out, this isn't actually the frill. I forgot to film this part when I was making the frill, and by the time I realised, it was too late. So this is just a random length of fabric but it's the same idea, marking um, at the halfway marks and the quarter marks, so you should end up with four marks equal distances apart to make it easier for you to spread your gathers more evenly when you come to attach your frill to your quilt. Then set your sewing machine up for the largest straight stitch, and then you're going to sew all the way around your frill, but we're going to stop sewing and then restart again at each of our marks we made on our frill. When you get to the first mark, stop sewing, lift up your presser foot and needle and break off your thread with a long tail end and then get as close as you can to that sewing with a small gap and start again and continue along to your next mark when you'll do exactly the same thing. Continue all the way around your strip and then do exactly the same with the second row all the way around the strip breaking at the same points as with the first row. Before you attach the frill to the quilt, you need to round off the corners. So just use a plate or something rounded, draw around it and cut around the marks with your fabric scissors and do exactly the same to all four of the corners. Next, you'll need to make four marks on your quilt so that you can match up your um, frill with the marks on your quilt. If you remember, on the frill we put 
four marks at um, the halfway marks and the quarter marks. I'm going to do exactly the same on the quilt. When you've made your four marks on your quilt, you need to match up the marks on your um, on your frill with the marks on your quilt so that you have all your quarter marks um, joined together and all your halfway marks joined together and then you can start to gather this way the gathers can be spread evenly throughout the quilt and you don't have all your gathers in one place start gathering between the first two marks when you think you've gathered your frill sufficiently so that it will fit in the area then you can start pinning it you may need to move the gathers about as you go along, get it to a length that you think is about right, and then start pinning into place. And if you need to, as you go along, you can move those gathers around or pull them a little bit tighter if need be. When you've finished working on the first quarter of your quilt, you can then move along to the next quarter and do exactly the same. Pull the gathers tight or as tight as you need to to get them to fit and then pin, pin them in place. Continue all the way around your quilt until you get back to where you started from and by this time you should have your, all of your frill nicely fitting all the way around the edge of your quilt. I made my own bias binding but if you want to buy it from the shop you'll need to buy half inch bias binding single fold. Start attaching your bias binding at the centre of one of your sides. Fold the edge of the binding that you are adding to the quilt. It should be folded over and you need to unfold it in order to attach it and leave a good 12 inch gap and a good long tail end when you start and place it face down on top of your frill then pin in place all the way around your quilt being very careful around the corners and probably be putting a few extra pins in on those corners but because you've cut the tape on the bias it means or if you've bought shop bought bias tape it means it will easily fold around the corners without too much difficulty carry on pinning your binding all the way around your quilt until you get back to where you started from and it's the same as at the beginning you're going to leave a gap the 12 inch gap but you're also going to leave a long tail end on your bias binding tape ready to join it to the other side once you've attached it so your binding to your frill and quilt and remember to change your stitch length back to your normal sewing stitch length back tacking at the start and the finish and taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance it's easy to see where, where to sew because the quarter of an inch seam allowance is marked on your binding it's the side where you opened it out and there will be a slight fold for you to sew along so sew all the way around removing your pins as you go along back tacking at the start and the finish and remember to start a little bit away from the middle because remember you're leaving a 12 inch opening and then when you get to the end you're going to finish before you get to the end so you can allow yourself that 12 inch opening and you're also going to make sure but you should have done this when you pinned anyway that you've got a good long tail end at each end enough that the two pieces will cross over and have plenty of room for you to join them together make a mark on the centre or roughly the centre of the opening. I'm using a friction pen but any pen will do for this. Then make a mark on both sides of your bias binding tapes at that centre mark. Line each side of the binding up with this mark, lower them slightly and then add a mark onto the binding. Then find your mark on the right hand piece of bias binding and add an extra inch to that side. This is to allow uh, for your join. Draw a line all the way across and then cut. Then cut the left hand side piece of bias binding on the original line. That's the one that lines up with the mark you made on your frill. Take the right hand piece of bias binding, open it out and lay it down face up. Then take the left hand piece and place that on top of the right hand piece with right sides together. And then you're going to put a pin in it and draw a line across at 45 degrees. And so your two pieces of bias binding together along this line, back tacking at the start and the finish. Before pressing this seam, make sure that it is right and your bias binding is going to fit. Then once you're sure of that, you can trim down the seam and press the seam open. Or in my case, I just finger pressed it open. Then pin in place before taking over to your sewing machine and sewing, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and the finish. Next. Press the seam towards the backing of your quilt. 
then fold the bias binding over. So the bias binding goes over the top of the seam and you've already got a quarter of an inch seam turned under on your bias binding so all you need to do is pin it in place. It's quite easy and it does feel it fall into place quite well. The only time you have difficulty is on the corners and that's why we're using bias binding so that we can manipulate it round the corners as it's cut on the bias of the fabric it means you can bend it and manipulate it to fit better. So pin all of the way around your quilt and then when you've pinned all the way around you can either hand sew your bias binding down or if you prefer you can sew it on your sewing machine. It doesn't matter which way you do it, if you do it on your sewing machine you will get a seam about a quarter of an inch away from the frill and that's fine because it really doesn't matter but if that bothers you then do like me and hand sew all the way around your quilt. It's a nice job to do of an evening while you're watching television but as I say if you don't want to hand sew it then by all means go around on your sewing machine. And now all that's left to do is to unpick your gathering stitches and here's the finished quilt. Thanks very much for watching I do hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it inspires you to make a quilt like this. If you did enjoy the video and you haven't already, could you please consider subscribing to my channel to help me grow. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.